Hey guys, so today's video is actually about gold plan in World of Warcraft. It's actually pretty good, it's not too bad I must say. However, I've got a bit of an announcement I thought I'd like to show off to you guys. We have the Furry Hunter class. It's up for sale on eBay. Um, it's pure shitpost. Like, I'm not going to lie, the whole thing is a pure and utter shitpost. Um, I've toned it down a wee touch because, like, you know, the one that we were having on Discord and showing boys was a bit, you know... You just can't sell it on eBay, you know what I mean? If I kept it, like, that's why I had to, like, tone it down a wee touch for the normies. You know how it is. You know how it is. But, look, um, you know, it is a pure shitpost. It's pure meme. Um, it's not for everyone, but, hey, it's only a pound. And, like, you know, I thought I was kind of thinking of, like, new ways to, like, you know, go, like, you know, I don't like the idea of people being like, oh, can you go support me on Patreon? Can you give us a few quid? It's like, no, you'd rather get something for it. So, like, you know, hey, if you want, throw us a pound. You get the Fairy Hunter class, which is a lot of entertainment, like, you know, untold hours of entertainment, you know? But, look, enough of that. Let's get actually into the video, will we? I hope you guys enjoy this one. I have some stories about World of Warcraft roleplaying. Gather around and listen to the tales of Johnny Thousand Mile. Role Paladin on roleplaying server, mid-burning crusade. Have this cool concept for a travelling paladin. Who kicks arse, who kicks arse, go. Ugh, stop. Who kicks ass, saves wenches, and is an all-round good guy for medieval standards. Want to name him Johnny Thousand Mile? Realise in character creation that you can't name your characters with a last name. Ah, uh, fuck it. Let's try some abbreviations of Johnny. Johnny? <laughs> Johnny? <laughs> that stupid fuck accents. accents. And so forth, they're all gone. Fuck this gay... Gay what? Fuck this gay earth dodgy <laughs> Decide to go for Thousand Mile. And it worked. Set up all add-ons, including Flag RSP, so everyone knew his actual name was Johnny, not this retarded fuck shit. Get instantly flack for it in Northshire, because Gunner Guy thought my name was not appropriate. That's very common. Um, Google Grand servers, even like live ones. Yeah, um, sure. What was well, Grand Gra Wizard's Gra first name Gra on Gra World of Warcraft? Gra Grand got away with that now. We were playing on a Google Plan server, right? And Grand managed to have the name G Wiz Leap Man. G Wiz Rape Man. Yeah. But until he was like in his like little thirties, which I will give him credit, which is really good. <laughs> and Grand is a very slow laugh group. Yeah. And it took him like six months to hit six feet. He's slow anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, in other ways. Anyway, come on, let's get back onto this, will we? I leveled through level 40, and in literally every zone, one arsehole reported my name and also wrote a ticket. What is wrong with you people? JPEG. I dinged 50 and got contacted by a GM. He politely asked me to log out so he could reset my name. I asked him in return why he would not just kick me. GM replies that he thought it would be nicer that way. Start to argue that my name is a moniker for my character because he walked 5,000 miles. And then walked 5,000 more. Oh, 500 miles. <laughs> I would walk 500 <laughs> miles and I would walk 500... Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, no, <laughs> GM falls for the joke and explains that he will let it slide. But I still have to log out so he can close the whole thing. Log out and voila. No name reset. Thanks GM. I level some more and once I ding 70, I decided to check out the role playing scene. I got some decent looking role playing gear and went into Stormwind in clad guard armour, save for my player name. It was very difficult to actually differentiate my character from the guards. I researched a bit the whole role playing scene on my server and there is an active guild that was a city guard regiment, a whole bunch of thieves and over 9000 paladin orders. The latter seemed like every bad Mary Sue archetype with different variants. Okay, .jpg. Johnny's backstory was basically this. He was one of the survivors of Lordaeron. Hacked undead left and right and now he was yearning for some peace. He decided to go south to Stormwind and look if there is some nice houses where he can relax. Since Johnny was a very pious man, his first visit to Stormwind after decades in the north, he really should go to the cathedral and pray. On his way to the cathedral, he sees a homeless man sleeping near the canal. He tosses a copper at the guy who rises up and starts yelling, Guards! Guards! I'm getting assaulted! Alright, me calm Can down. you down? Right. Give me my <laughs> copper back! Fucking fuck off, bitch! Alright? Confused, my paladin tries to calm the hobo down, but to no avail. The guards arrive relatively fast and drag Johnny off to the dungeon. No due processes. Nothing. 
At one point, Johnny demanded trial by combat, but I just got sarcastic whispers. No jewels, out of character scrub. Alright, fucking game well, boys. Alright. At this point, I just should have quit the fucking game. Yes! <laughs> Everyone, you shouldn't have bothered up in the way. Yeah, exactly, just fucking I'm, quit I'm the game. I'm going this is a private server with a max, like, XP. Yeah. Because, like, hitting level 70 back end would have taken you months, so there's no way this is, like, the first time. Yeah. This is, like, you know, it, he spent, like, 20 minutes fucking hitting level 70. But, oh well. I wanted to see what had happened next. The guild leader told me that for my assault on the hobo, my character would get a few days in the dungeons. Johnny was furious and went about how the people in the south were ungrateful retards and he demanded justice. At this point, I didn't know that there was also a guild of Scarlet Crusaders in town. Scarlet Crusaders might have helped him. He would have, he would, if he's from Gordon, he would know the Scarlet Crusade. Sorry, okay, look, I enjoy Moat Don't blame alright? We know, Jim. Alright. We know. You have Megan, that, Megan hates World of Warcraft, you by have, the way. You have that look about you. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> In my backstory, the Scarlet Loonies were pretty much the antagonists of Johnny's life, and he looked pretty angry when a Scarlet Crusader came to bail Johnny out. The character was some washed up guy, a new recruit fresh out of the street. He only brought a letter, and someone vouched for me as I was set free. Just like that. To my dismay, the Scarlet Guild were the only decent players in town. The guard was full of erotic role-playing fags oh. and hateful women. Women playing guys who were butt-fucking each other. Yes, that's a fetish of many women. <laughs> playing guys that fuck each other. Is that a fetish, Megan? Can you tell us? I, I n- neither confirm nor deny. Alright, okay. <laughs> I groaned more often than not when you saw a gay couple on the street. So these are the people that call you a fascist on Reddit then, yeah? 100%. Yeah. While the thieves were nice as players and very well versed with the lore, their characters were complete arseholes. The hobo that got me into jail was just the tip of the iceberg. So Johnny walked with the scarlet recruit to whoever just bailed him out and both talked. The guy was named Tankard and was actually a young guy. Due to engine limitations, all humans looked like Conan in different garb. Tankard hoped to be a knight one day, or even a paladin, if his faith was strong enough. Johnny, who was the ball buster as always, pretty much crushed Tankard's hopes and dreams with one sentence. This boy spelt sentence with a C. Ah, uh, he must have been Stephen when he looked this. <laughs> Honestly, there's so many spelling mistakes <laughs> in this, it's kind of hard to believe. So, in you're a commoner lad. You're never going to be a knight unless someone is desperate enough to train you. With his shoulders hanging, Tankard brought Johnny to a guy named Siegfried. He was the captain. Aff. Aff. Oh my captain god, these. Aff. Is he, he from Northern Ireland or is he Steeman? No, he's Steeman. All right. He was the captain of the small Scarlet Band that was in Stormwind to levy new recruits for the effort in the north. In the lore up until Wrath of the Lich King, the Scarlet Crusade was a splinter fraction of the Silver Hand. They pretty much held all living settlements in Lordaeron and were fighting undead on a daily basis. They were also extremely xenophobic, which is considered a very bad thing in World of Warcraft. Very bad. But, you know, I can kind of understand where they come from because, like, you know, undead hordes, you know? Yeah. I thought you said undead whores. No, well, that too. Like, <laughs> you know, like, never mind. The under 70s. Like, let's keep going. Don't worry. The whole theme of the guild seemed desperate enough so I could play along. Obviously, Johnny hated Siegfried because he was a crusader. After some short smack talk, my paladin thanks Siegfried with great shame for the rescue and we parted ways. Over the next days, I explored the town and got more into contact with all the criminals. Tankard would show up then and now. That now and then? <laughs> I have no idea what the fuck he's trying to say here. <laughs> and he pretty much tagged along. Nothing really of note happened. The thieves and criminals were arseholes as usual and tried to make trouble. Johnny was now somewhat friends with Siegfried and his pals, so the guards did not bother with him. He could do what he wanted as long as no one got killed. This pretty much meant that whenever they saw Johnny, they either bailed or tried to get him into trouble. One memorable moment after a week of play was when they shoved a priest into the canal and blamed Johnny for it. (laughs) Johnny did it! This time the guards were not dumb enough to fall for it and asked the priest who was wet, dirty and smelling like shit. Obviously he pointed at the bunch of arseholes and told the guards that they shoved him in. After two weeks or so, Siegfried called again for me and this time he had an assignment, if Johnny was willing to help. 
they received word that a warlock was somewhere in Stormwind and was causing trouble. Reluctantly, we accepted the mission and visited the mage's quarters to look for clues. What I did not know at the time, the guy I was supposed to find was a very well-known player on the realm and he wanted to sack his character. He was rather fed up with the whole shit that the guards were pulling and decided to kill off his character for good. Since there would be a fucking outcry in the forums when the Scarlets murdered him, Siegfried advised that Johnny should get him. According to him, I was the only decent non-Scarlet paladin on the server. At this point, I did not realise how awesome I was apparently, but whatever, I was playing Johnny from now on. I would stumble into adventures by accident. Tankard left the Crusaders for personal reasons. He never told me why, but I like to believe that he hoped the old paladin would take him as a squire one day. We visited the player guild that were acting as the mages in Stormwind. I assumed they were the usual bunch of retards who were par gamers like the rest. Oh boy, was I wrong. They all played retardedly powerful wizards, but with a twist. If you ever played Morrowind, there was the noble house of Telvanni, insane slavers and mages that cared little for the rest of the world. This guild was basically just that. Crazed wizards that only cared for their spell tombs. When we entered the tower, the clerk asked us if we had an appointment. Obviously, we didn't have one, but we were in an urgent mission. Siegfried didn't bother to give us a letter or something, so we might get preferential treatment. But I'll doubt that this would have helped. The clerk then sighed and politely told us that without an appointment, we might have to wait a while because the wizards need to schedule their study time. Johnny groaned and Tankard was slightly confused. After an hour, one wizard bothered to show up. He led us into the tavern, the blue recluse, and all the time he did not say a word. We sat next to him. He looked at us as if we were madmen. What are you doing here? Why are you following me? It took some time to explain, but after an hour of insane blabbing, the old man finally understood that we were not trying to sell him the latest issue of wizard gardening. The informations he gave us on our warlock were scarce. All we got told was that he was somewhere in Stormwind and likes tea. I decided to log off for the night. The whole affair with the wizard left exhausted. I am still unsure if parts of our clue hunt were staged by the warlock player, but I like to believe that our characters got him only with their wits and unexpected help. Over the next few days, we hunted for clues and we always found something. A hobo overheard something, a tavern wench recognised the warlock by our description and so on. The real problem for Tankard and Johnny was that we were not exactly subtle. Everyone and their mothers knew we were looking for the warlock and this made us a target rather fast. There were other warlocks in town who kept a low profile and thought we were targeting them. It only took so long before the first one hired thugs to get rid of us. This time the Arshole Brigade, that's what everyone called the criminals, sent someone more fearsome. His name was Reinhard. The guy was rather big and his flag only said this, Reinhard, the biggest fellow you ever saw in your life. To amplify his fearsome statue, the player also drank the elixir of giant growth. It makes your engine character bigger. He also had a group of thugs, who all had the odd fight or fallout with Tankard and Johnny. They ambushed us when we were on a trip to a small festival in Lakeshire. The hardcore and total immersive role players Tankard and I were, we walked on foot. Fuck the griffin. When Reinhard and his gang showed up, I literally wished that we had taken the griffin this time. He was wearing some pants and wielding a giant ass hammer, nothing else. The rest of his gang were all rogues in engine class so we had some bowmen and one guy with a blunderbust. Tankard and Johnny were on their steeds and had only their courage and Johnny his armour. I was pretty sure that Reinhard would fucking murder us right there and now. The big guy didn't talk much. He only told us that we were looking for things that were not our business and we should stop it. Johnny and Tankard obviously would not hear anything of it and started to ask Reinhard questions. Funnily enough, Reinhard answered our questions and realised rather quickly that we're not hunting his employer, but someone else. It still didn't matter, even though we knew who we were looking for. A guy named Guile Reinhard, Reinhard, was still going to kill us. He decided that he would get pay from both, his employer and Guile. Great. Deciding that we were fucked, Johnny urged Tankard to run the fuck away. Tankard turned to Johnny with a face like stone and said, I am Tankard. I do not run. I am Tankard. I endure. Oh, mother of God. I did not see this one coming. 
He was a giant 40k fag like me. Reinhard laughed a little bit, and then we started fighting. Our mounts got shot from the start, so there was no chance for Johnny to land someone. The following fight was rather chaotic. Reinhard did not fight, and let his thugs wear us down. Tankard fought bravely and managed to smack one rogue while I was able to smash the knee of another with my mace. Still, we were outnumbered and a paladin is not superhuman. My mace was ruined, my shield broken and Tankard had an arrow in his arm. Just when I was prepared to write my I die emote, a bunch of gnomes appeared. Like, at least 15. Fucking gnomes. (laughs) There was this huge ass gnome guild on the server that was a mixture of slapstick, modern military and another bunch of crazy scientist wizards. The head gnome, Commander Gearspark, politely approached the fight and asked for directions. Johnny, Tankard and the Arsehole Brigade looked baffled at the gnomes. Obviously they were looking for a way to Lakeshire but they seemed lost. Something about overworld travel and insignificant supply of steam tanks. Reinhard decided that the fight was done for the day and bailed with his gang. The gnomes patched us up and started to ask us questions. Especially their medic. He acted like he'd never seen a human body up close before and asked politely if he was allowed to make some experiments. Every gnome was so polite, it got a bit creepy. So we tagged along with the gnomes and finally arrived at Lakeshire. To my surprise, our target was also there. The warlock was pretty much so obvious to spot, I'm still surprised I didn't recognise him first. He wore a black robe and a black pointy hat and would always cough like someone who was really sick. Furthermore, he would always read books with weird titles but blank pages. The nutjob wizard from earlier explained to Johnny that this was some enchanted ink that only he could read. Literally everyone was in Lakeshire to celebrate Lothar's birthday or something. And when Johnny asked the wizard why he would not just fry Giles arse, he replied, Oh no, why would I do that? If I get injured or worse, have to prepare spells. I will lose precious study time. To this day, I'm fucking convinced that this guild was either led by Terry Pratchett or he was at least part of them. Johnny and Tankard had pretty much enough and decided to confront Guile. Not exactly the smartest plan since they lacked evidence and the only person who could vouch for them was banned from the festival. Yes, Siegfried and his people were not allowed to come. The guards decided that they would try to burn someone again and they didn't want to bother with that or something. Gael took the news that we were going to murder him rather relaxed. He commended our courage and the player told me, out of character, that he had a very entertaining time in the last few days. Apparently Tankard and Johnny did not just make the warlocks nervous, but outright scared. Gael told me that most of them were power gaming arsehals and were not playing warlocks, but some kind of dark... What the fuck does that even say? Sephriot bullshit. Super Mary Sue? Yeah, sounds about like. Fuck. Gay boys! (laughs) Obviously, we will never be able to kill them, but alone the prospect that someone competent, non scarlet aligned, hunted warlocks rather boldly put them near the brink of panic. The player then pretty much told Tankard and me the whole deal of his desired character's death. Since Tankard and Johnny became quite famous on the server, he decided that he wanted Guile to go out with a bang. Guile led both of them to the other side of the lake, where the three of them would fight. In retrospect, that was the dumbest thing Johnny could have done. He just could have stabbed the fucker right there, but maybe my desire to give the character a nice send-off was too big. Guile was obviously a very good role player, and his character was a potent caster. Slightly above the average power level, but never way too powerful. The fight basically went like this. Johnny and Tanker charged at him but Gael disappeared in puff of smoke and hid in a bush. While we were looking for him, he summoned imps that were jumping us from all sides. Nothing dangerous, but imagine fighting ten or so little imps jumping in your face. After annoying minutes of wailing and cursing, Johnny and Tankard got rid of the imps. Too late, they realised that Gael used this time to summon a rather powerful minion, Felguard. To do this, Gal lost a crap load of blood and was panting like a sick man on the sidelines while his minion was beating the crap out of us. The fight dragged on for a good hour and no one from the festival bothered to look for us. In the final moments, Johnny got knocked down and the demon was strangling him. Tankard realised that they both could not kill a thing unless the guy who summoned it was dead or unconscious. Or so he assumed. While Johnny was fighting for his breath, Tankard ran to Gal and started hitting him. 
Obviously it took more than a few hits to knock the fucker out, so Tankard would hit Gal and always look if the thing was finally going to disappear. I have no idea if Gal's player decided that it would work or not, or if it was actually the case with summons, but when Tankard finally knocked Gal out, the fell guard disappeared. Exhausted and pretty beaten up, Tankard and Johnny were now facing the problem, what to do with the fucker? Tankard just wanted to stab him. Johnny wanted to try to have him executed. The prospect of Scarlet Crusaders or someone else making a show of Gal's executions entertained his player greatly, but we all three did not reckon that there was one warlock that was rather unusual. That sentence makes no sense whatsoever, I but I am reading it the way he wrote it, but <laughs> I, it makes I, I, no... Can you please let us know in the comments about what he was trying to say in that? But we all three did not reckon that there was one warlock that was rather unusual. Alright, sure, okay. Fuck it, I don't know. <laughs> Gal was pretty happy at this point. His character had a nice final arc. He was defeated by good players playing good characters and the trial would be a nice cherry on top of it. While Tankard and Johnny argued how they should kill Gal, a hooded woman appeared. Her name was Floris Bridges and her character was nothing more than a woman that was cleaning the street. While her engine class was a warlock, no one ever bothered to investigate her. She was just some crazy lady that was hitting hobos with her brooms sometimes, and the wizards bought her cookies. Since Tankard and Johnny did not recognise her and were occupied with the details of Giles' demise, they did not realise that Giles was dragged away slowly. Johnny then looked baffled at the hooded woman and asked, Tankard, did you hire someone to drag the warlock away? No, John. Did you? The whole thing was funnier back then since we both as players did not see her at first. We were too deep in our conversation about stakes, powers and shit. Floris was the different kind of warlock. While Gal summoned demons to ruin your day, she simply casted some curses to either kill you slowly or just paralyse you for a few seconds. Without a word, she paralysed both of us the moment we were noticing her and just dragged Gal off. The whole thing was happening so stupendously slow that I could only laugh. Whoever played Floris did a great job. The curse was lifted after some time and Gal decided that after his rather unexpected rescue to stick around for a while. Siegfried wasn't too happy about Gal escaping but he was pretty sure that he was going to hide for a while. Johnny then decided to reward Tankard for his bravery since he would have been strangled by the demon if Tankard hadn't knocked the warlock out. While Tankard hoped that Johnny would finally say be my squire I decided that this is boring. Frankly, I hate this whole mentor and pupil role play because it cripples your play style. That's a bit self-centered. Yeah. Like, he doesn't really want to do it. If he like, wants it, like, do it. Do, just do it. Like, like and he, 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 he doesn't seem like that bad of a wee fella, yeah. you know, and he really wants it. Like, you know, do it on the side, just something really quickly. Yeah. You know why? You're always forced to help another character develop as mentor and as pupil. Nothing happens unless your mentor is halfway competent. I decided Tanker deserved more than that. And I knighted the lad. It sounds cheesy, but which boy manages to survive a fight with a warlock, saves a veteran paladin's life at the same time. Siegfried was happy to see his little renegade at least become a good warrior. The whole ceremony for Tankard's knighthood was rather small, but many people showed up, especially people I did not expect. The gnomes came, then the wizards, also Floris Bridges. I still have no idea what her deal is, but damn that woman has some balls. The wizards gifted us both enchanted cookies. I still don't know what the point of the cookies were. I also have no idea why they even bothered to show up. Because they were all just sitting in a corner and reading books. The head clerk that was running the whole deal was doing a fine job. Siegfried and his band were doing some honour salute thing. I'm not a military guy. But you know this honour parades when some big wig visits your country. Every North Korean video you've ever seen. <laughs> When everything was done, Tankard and Johnny set out as battle brothers to hunt Guile and accomplice. And Floris Bridges was waving at us and wishing us luck with our hunt. Dumb bitch. <laughs> <laughs> if Johnny and Tankard only knew. So, as you guys can tell at the end of that, it does sound like an awful lot more. I haven't been able to find more of the story, but if you guys want it, we can do it, you know what I mean? Um, that wee bitch, it's up to no good. Fucking, what was her name? Floris? Floris. 
horse bridges. Ah, uh, she can get fucked, you know, fine. Like, she's up to no good. But, like, let us know if you want there to be a part two of this. I don't know. It's a, it's kind of different from what we normally do. You know what I mean? Um, it, it is different. Normally, these stories are always shit shows. Like, you know, any from, like, low plan server or game or whatever. Like, you know, any, like, massively from one, it's always a shit show. But this one wasn't actually all too bad, even if it was a bit messy in parts. But hey, look, as always, guys, let us know down below. Remember, check out the Furry Hunter class. It's up for sale on eBay. Links down below. All of the good shit. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Oh, wait. Megan's got a new video. Go check it out.